thanks so much for stopping by. Tonight I'm going to be showing you how I paint a wild rose onto a glass bottle. This bottle actually is a perfect decorative dispenser. It can be used throughout your household for, from everything from oil and vinegar, sauces, condiments to soaps, lotions, and bath oils. So, you know, bottles have a lot of different purposes, and this one I think would be pretty if you, once I get it painted, if you were to put fairy lights on the inside of it and have it as a, a home decor piece. I guess that in the way, it's so big that it's kind of hard to get into my screen here. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and start with the tools I'll be using. I'm going to be using a stylus, which is a dotting tool a Westonia fine liner, which is actually a finger and quarter scruffy brush by, by plaid. Sorry about that. And then I'm going to be using a number 12 flat brush also by plaid with one stroke brush. And unless I throw something else in there, that should do it. As far as paints go, I use all folk art paint. And this one is moon yellow. Sunflower, Autumn Leaves, Wicker White, Thicket, and Warm White. And I vary back and forth between the multi-surfaces and the enamels, I'm trying to transfer my all my paints over to the multi-surface, but for now I still have a mixture. So for my Wild Rose, I am actually going to be using the autumn leaves and the warm white. And basically right now what I'm doing is double loading my brush. You're supposed to basically have it three quarters of the way up, up the bristles, but I don't always follow that. If you see my videos, a lot of my videos you'll understand. I'm kind of just do what feels comfortable. And one thing I need to note too is that this bottle is not smooth. It has ridges in it, so it does add a little bit of a learning curve here with trying to paint on it. But I'm just going to randomly go around and place these roses onto the bottle. And hopefully I will get these on well enough without sticking my hands in them. Very good at doing that. This is not the first time I've painted on a bottle, but normally they're wine bottles, so they are smoother and don't have the ridges in it like this one does. Alright, so let's just keep going here with this. And I'm basically just touching and wiggling my brush. So I'm just up here wiggling it around and pulling it. And doing the same going this direction. I got the paint. I don't know what happened there. I have it on the wrong side or what? But anyways. And then just coming back here. And then I'm going to do the same here. Just kind of bring it around. Kind of fix that up a little bit. All right, I'm just going to keep going with this part of it. There is still another part to come, but that will. Separate. All right. I'm going to kind of try to place my open ones just in various spots around the bottle. Now with this flower, you can actually just keep trying to go around it with one, I don't want to say one stroke, but around it without actually stopping like I kind of did here. So if I'm going to do that, I need to make that blend in. Make it look like that's what I did around the whole flower. 
And I feel like what these little divots has got in this, or not, probably not divots, but the raised spots it has, and it's giving the flowers a funny look. But that could just be me. And with this type of a rose, you could just do one or two, not one, but two or three layers and call it a day. I'm trying to make all mine into um, a three layer. Now this is not the only style I'm going to do as far as the roses go. I will be doing some, some that look more like buds. keep doing that. I'm so used to doing that with my other roses that I keep trying to create them the same way and they're not. They're just not. I thought this the orange or the um, autumn would look pretty with the green. That's why I went this direction with it. And I could opt to do a smaller brush for the center. But for right now, I'm just going to go like this. Tap it in. Actually, let me scrape some of the paint off of here. There you go. And I like things in odd numbers, so I probably will land this with, I don't want to lean on any of them, with an odd number of open flowers. Hopefully you can see that. I'll raise it. And this one I'm going to try to do it as if I'm doing it all the way around without stopping. And then we'll just keep doing it here. Now, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already done it, if you would subscribe before you leave, hit that notification bell so that you get notified whenever I post something new. And then at the end of the video, if you would give it a big thumbs up, I surely would appreciate it. Here we go. How many of them have? I think I have five or four of the open. So let's go up here. I haven't done anything really that far up in, up in the top here yet. I'm going to go back over this part here. Kind of make it all blend in. Just ruffling it up a little bit too as I go. So do you ever decorate with bottles? If you do, let me know down below what's your favorite thing to do with bottles if you're decorating them for your home or gifts because I'm sure they make awesome gifts too. If you have any thoughts on things that you would like to see created in my shop, or shop, sorry, on my channel, please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I'm always looking for new ideas. Do this one a little bit better. I'm 
Okay, got that. And then what I'm going to do is just go around and add in just some kind of like buds, you know, just some extra. All right, so what I'm doing now is getting ready to add these other just more of a, I don't want to say a bud, but like a partially opened part of the flower. And I'm praying that I am keeping my hands off of the painted ones. Because I'm very good at touching things that I shouldn't. So I'm just like Tapping this in, bringing it back like that. This part I could probably do up a little bit more. I'm just bringing it up with some of the orange. I'm tapping it in there. All right. Oops. And I'll just go around, add some of those here and there. Maybe even not as full. It could be smaller. And it's kind of like one of these things where you're kind of like wiggling up and down or wiggling. And then you go like that, go like that. Let's get different looks every time I put my put my brush into the paint. And I'm just going to add that in here with like that. And just kind of, just a, just a fun little flare. And I could put more in there. I don't know what happened down here. But just around, just stick them in here every so often. Like I said, I don't have to fill up the whole bottle. And I might feel like I need to, but I don't really have to. And I'm going to have this one kind of like this. I'm just kind of up and down, bring it around. The only thing I find is that I tend to, when I'm doing a color like this, some colors are easier for me to use for whatever reason, that I end up getting too much of the orangey look as opposed to the white. So, I like with this one, and I can maybe add part in there like that. I want to make sure I get that filled in. I don't want it to look like that. I can dug the paint out. Alright. I think it's really pretty with the, with the color of the bottle. I really seriously do. Let me see how many of those I have. You put another one down here. And I'm on purpose, you know, purposely trying to leave some of the green glass of the bottle open so that you, you know, if I, if I would choose to put fairy lights in here that I would ha be able to see, which would make sense, right? Like so, these kind of little flowers you just kind of can play with a little bit. Not really doing like a certain set of of petals per se. You know, we're just kind of coming in with them like that even, but they're not all the same. I think that's pretty. And then my next thing is, of course, to be able to put some leaves in here, which. <clears throat> Many of you know I go crazy with that. Okay, now when I was originally going to do this bottle, I thought about doing more of the, you know, my citrus green that I like so much. But with the bottle being green, just kind of got lost. So I'm doing my 
all my leaves and stuff such in this uh, just the I don't know where my brain is tonight the sunflower and then with the thicket green so let's go ahead and get started and I'm going to hopefully be doing most of them with the yellow on the outer part just so that you can see it now if I was strictly doing it all with green you wouldn't be able to see it that well now I might let me go ahead and do this before I go on I was afraid that it might be too I'm gonna go ahead and do this part add that part in and I can do it like I'm gonna like they're all kind of they're all kind of working together here And I can you know, fill it in more if I want. And come back in here with some yellow. Oops. Got a little crazy with that one. Let me do that a little bit thicker. And then bring it down. All right, and let me go back and do that with this one. I just hate when I get my get paint on my brush so thick. I don't like it. Let's do that with this one. Alright, I'm just going to pull this like it's coming. I guess they're all coming from this one here. Who knew? Alright, I'm going to get that a little bit thicker. And I can always look, give that some more drying time and come back and work on it some more. But I'm just going to leave it like that. There's another one. Here we go. So I'm just touching and pulling. Just touching and pulling. So touch on the chisel edge and then I pull. And then I'm going to have it go right in there. Now again, if I want it to turn it around, I could do that and get more yellow looking out of it. Um, if I feel like my brush is too thick of paint, then I kind of brush it off a little bit. I just don't, I don't know why, but I have a hard time with brushes being filled with paint too much. And I know some people love their brushes to be really thick of with paint, but I don't. Put that one here. I'm doing the same thing again. And keep in mind too, when your paint is still wet and you're still working, you're working wet on wet basically, you, know, you, ha you have the risk of you know, the underlying color kind of blending in with it too or coming part of it. So keep that in mind. You know, if you want to let some drying time in between, by all means, give it give it some drying time. It's fine. So give it some drying time, or hit it with a heat gun. You know, whatever you have, hair dryer. That might help. Now I'm going to try a darker green one on here and see what it looks like. I'm just not sure that it's going to show very well. Now keep in mind though, when you turn on a light inside the bottle, if you decide to do that's what you're doing with it, then it probably will be very pretty. I'm just afraid that it's not going to show up very well. Running out of room here. Let me do this this one again. I sound like the center to have so much paint in it. 
All right. As you can vary the type of leaves you're doing as you do your painting, they don't all have to be the same. Let me show you an example because, like, those were two different ones as far as similar, similar, uh, similar type leaf. However, you, know, you have the one, the dark color on the outside on one, you have the light color on the outside on the other, and this one you have kind of a combination. You have light and dark. I mean, that's pretty too. You can just, like I said, rotate them around so they're not all the same. Like this one, I'm going to do probably the opposite. And dip it in here. The problem I'm having with this bottle is trying to keep from <coughs> touching the painted parts. Alright, so I have green. I always have to think about this. I have the green, and then I'm going to go like this. And then, okay, that's my yellow. Let's get a little bit more in there. I want that to be more noticeable. I don't know what my problem is tonight with my leaves. So normally I do them pretty well. Okay, let me try this again. It's going to become a blooper video. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, let me do this. Sorry guys, I really do know how to paint, for heaven's sakes. And I really don't want to go back into wiping it off because then I have other issues that come up. Okay, let's get this in here. I want to get this paint out of there. Well, that's a weird looking leaf, but I'm going to leave it. I'm going with it. So don't do exactly what I do. <laughs> please, please don't do exactly what I do. And they can be different sizes. They don't all have to be the same size either. You can mix it up a little if you choose. If you choose to do so. Okay, that one has so many. Let's see what we can do with this one. This one I'm going to do, I think I'm going to go like this. That's just going to be my typical. And then I'm going to do, let's do this one up here. I like that. Let's see how pretty that is so far. I love it. I'm not done yet. Not done yet. Alright, so I'm going to add some more over here. Put the yellow on the outside and the yellow on the inside. I'm just doing a slight wiggle and then pulling it down. Alright. Some more paint off my brush. I think part of my problem is I'm not I'm not putting it in my my brush enough. And I'm gonna do the green over here. But I'm trying to make it I'm trying to make it opaque. Oops, I got some I don't know what I got in there. Got something in there. I 
little bit of light. All right, and you can put three colors. You know, you can. There's nothing wrong with triple loading your brush or having some of the color pull out from whatever it is you're painting and add basically add another color to your painting. Okay, I'm going to try to do this a little bit different. Put the yellow on the outside. And on this one, it's going to be like this other one right next to it. I'm going to put the yellow on, the, on both outside parts. What's up? There you go. <clears throat> and you just kind of look around and say, hmm, where else do I need? Need some more greenery. And I think this one would be a great place. It's kind of my crazy one that I just did and had such a difficult time on that leaf. And I'm just going to do one like that. And just keep wiggling it. Probably part of my problem too is I keep lifting my brush up. But that's okay. I'm well aware. Well aware. Now, with these other ones, I'm going to give myself some more thicket. You can you know, do some regular, just like quick little leaves. I probably should load it this brush again. And just pull them up. Get, make sure I'm up in here. Up around the flower a little bit. I don't know, it kind of curved a little bit because I have a curve right there, as I mentioned before. And do that. You can even bring it up into there. You can then pull another one out like that. And then go. I just put like little, just little veins in them. Not anything too crazy. You could also, on some of these, just go ahead and do another, make sure I have enough paint, another wiggly, I keep doing that, wiggly leaf right underneath it. And let's see, yeah, let's do it like that. Uh, this one's going to kind of go over the flower a little bit, but that's okay. Like I always say in nature, nothing is perfectly, you know, you get a bouquet, they're all mixed up, and that's fine. Then you could maybe even lay some of these simple little stroked flowers, or leaves, like a simple one-stroke leaf. Basically, pull it out like that, put a little vein in it, and you're done. I'm just going to scrape some of that off. I just don't have any paper towels down here with me right now, which I should probably have, but I don't. I can just go like that. I just kind of alternate them a little bit. They even go like that. Like I said, where they're, they don't have to be, this doesn't have to be the same. You don't have to go around and do exactly the same thing from one flower to the next, just because they're similar. It's just not necessary. And it's okay to overlap, too. If you want to overlap, that's part of nature. Now, like I said, on this one, I think I'm just going to go ahead and do a wiggly I'm going to go back in here, sorry, and it's going to go over my crazy, crazy leaf that I just did a little bit ago, that I didn't really like too much of, so this is part of my, this is how you fix that, <laughs> you layer it, cover it up, shh, don't tell anybody. I can do this. I can actually do another one that goes up here. And then I'm going 
to get some of that paint off of there. Just very, very simple. As you know, most of my paintings are, I, I intend for them to be, because I really do want people to be able to paint. I don't want it to be a situation where some people's work is beautiful, but I would have no, even if they are doing a tutorial, I have no idea how to do it. I just feel like I'm you know, so inexperienced at times and that that that's hard. And I don't want people to feel that way. Mine are probably too simplistic at times where it's probably a great a great way to get maybe some ideas, but maybe your skill level is so beyond what I'm teaching you know, that you don't have interest in it. And I get that. I totally get that. I'm going to do like that. I can even have it come down a little bit. That's kind of transparent. I don't like that. I want it to be more opaque. And then I mess up. Why? This is giving me a way to go. But it is. Well, then that stinks. Just did. Goodness sakes. You might be naming this a blooper. I mentioned that earlier. <laughs> if it keeps going this way. Dag nab it. And uh, let's see here what else. I just kind of, you know, just turn the bottle and see. You know, where you might want to add some more. I mean, you could even do some things like that where you put in some filler flowers. Turn this upside down. It's getting hard to, hard to hold. Just you know, maybe put some little little lines in them. Just completely touch quickly. And then you can do you know do whatever whenever. Like I said, you don't have to do it all the way to the top. <clears throat> you don't have to, you know, fill it completely in. You can do, you know, a couple, a couple of the filler flower type things, you know, sporadically. Just trying to get this to be a little thinner, and then just do maybe the kind where you just kind of pull them back, pull them back. Pull them back, pull them back, pull them back. They're just kind of fun, fun flowers. Just kind of fill it in. Or you can just stay with more like just the one stroke kind of easy peasy leaves. And just put them in where you feel like you need them. Like that. And these you could even put like dots, you know, dot dot in them. So that gives them some color. Oops. Right there. I might do this one down here like this. And then do more. Thicker paint. <sighs> Driving me nuts. Okay, and I'll just kind of put the little vine, little veins in them, like that. 
And like I said, I think I might stop it right here because I can get really heavy handed with the with doing the dotting. So I want to be careful with that. Let's see here. Might need to dry this a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to be using that quarter inch scruffy and you can see I'm actually just tapping in part of the center of the flower. I'm going to go around and do all of the, the centers, just tapping in the green, and this is the thicket green. It's kind of tapping in the center. Hopefully you can see. I'm sorry if it's hard to see. This bottle's kind of heavier than I thought as far as working with it. I was not expecting it to be that heavy. But I'm just using the scruffy and just stippling or st however you want to say it with this scruffy brush. The centers. This one. Okay. And then I'm going to go in. Let's see if I can get some of this paint out of here. I gotta work quickly. And see if I can get some of this yellow. Let's go back to the first one here tapped in here and with that green. I wanted it to mix a little bit better but for some reason it doesn't seem to want to do that. And I really wanted it to. Okay. I did what I wanted it to. Yay. Then I have my next one. I'm going to stipple that in here. It's funny how you can do it one, it's great, and then the next one it behaves totally different. I don't know why that is. Okay, let's do that. I, I don't want it to look like that. I want it to look more of a softer. There we go. Give a little bit more yellow down here. Okay, here we go. Keep on going. Keep on going while we got it going. It's funny how quickly some of this dries. I'm going to keep it. I was hoping it would blend better. Maybe I should have done both steps. I was thinking it would work better giving it a chance to dry a little bit and of course then that's not so so all right let's go down to this next one do the same thing I'm tap tap tapping I'm gonna put a little bit more green let me get some of that out of there some of the green in here and then I want to put a little bit more yellow. Now you can use like yellow light if you have it. I don't particularly, once in a while I'll have that color, but I don't typically have that on hand. That would be pretty in this too, as, a, as opposed to the sunflower. But as I mentioned, I don't have it. And I thought since I'm using sunflower anyways for part of the leaving, or actually for all the leaving, I would do that instead. Minimize the amount of colors that I'm using. I think that helps people too when they're trying to recreate. If you don't have to have 12,000 colors, you're good. You're good to go. And that gets a little heavy there, unfortunately. To tap that in and then put some more green in there. So you just have to keep working it till you get it where you want it. That's all. Basically, that's what it amounts to. You get the look you want. All right. So then the next step is going to be 
I'm going to do this part first and it's to take my liner brush and then just do some squigglies around it but it, I want to make sure, oh you know what, I'm not using that, sorry, messed up here. I'm going to actually use, hopefully it's still wet, use the moon yellow because I want it to stand out some. come out and now I'm just going to do some squigglies around it here. I love these brushes. I just, I do. I just love this brush because it enables me to do some of the stuff that I typically couldn't do with a liner brush. I always had such a hard time and then when I discovered these after watching some videos, it's like, oh my gosh, it's so much easier. I mean, some things it's not, but for stuff like this, I think it's great. I'm also going to do it in white, but right now I'm just going to focus on the yellow. And just softly pull it out around. Just kind of whimsically. Because they're kind of crazy. They don't go... They're not all in a straight line or straight circle around the flower. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Maybe you can see it better. And then I'll go to this one. Do the same thing. I'm kind of partially going into the green a little bit. And it's okay if some of the green comes out. That's fine. Like I said, when you're painting what on what, sometimes you're going to have that. Well, you might as well plan on having it, actually. So if you don't like it, then don't do what on what. You can give some drying time, like I said, or do the hair dryer, the heat gun, whatever you have available to you. Alright, we're almost done. I need to hurry up for my... I didn't try. I tried to do the bottle last night and I was not happy with what I painted on it. So, I just scratched it for last night. I really want to get this on for Friday. Alright, let's see. Did I get them all? Nope. One more to go. But I think when you put some detail into the center like this, then it really is very pretty. You know, it gives, gives some interest. Makes it stand out a little bit more. Alright, I think I got them all. So then I want to go back quickly with the white. I'm just going to try to wipe some of that out. And then just go back, get, get some white in here too. Add, add some fun. Let the white get in there and really make it show. Because then the last part is going to be using the dotting tool. So I'm just quickly going around here. Sometimes I feel like I don't get any paint on my brush. Or evidently where I got the paint, it's not coming off. And I end up with nothing. You don't want to get too crazy with them, which I'm starting to, but... I just like to try to curve them a little bit, make them look like they have some movement. And sorry, but it's like there's a lot to do on this bottle. A little bit bigger than a cup, huh? Or a wine glass. All right, getting close, getting close. I promise, I promise. I gotta remember to stay on camera. Sorry, guys. Get into what I'm doing, and on the next thing I know, I'm off doing something else. You can't see it. Oh, crap. 
one more. Then I've got to do the dotting and then we'll be done. We'll be done. We'll be done. Hopefully you like it. Again, if you like this video, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up before you leave. If you haven't subscribed already, I would appreciate it if you would consider doing so tonight to make sure that you don't miss any of my future videos. Hit that notification bell. That will alert you when I do have something posted. And please hit that share button that's underneath each video that you see. And share, 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 share with your friends and family. So right now I'm using the dotting tour, the stylus, and just quickly going around it to add some dots to it. And with this yellow, it's kind of hard to see, but when you throw in the white, that will definitely help. And again, I'm hoping you can see this. Sorry if it's not the greatest video. This bottle is kind of big. It almost makes me feel like it's bigger than a wine bottle, which I don't think it is. I think it's shorter. I do like dots. You could put more dots in here. It will make it stand out more. But again, I just don't want to have the video going too long. Hopefully I'm getting them all. Great gift idea. If you're trying to do something unique for the holidays, why not do this? Okay, I think I got that. Let me go back in and I'm going to throw some white dots in here. Again, it's just a matter of dotting around. Alright. You get the gist at least, right? It's still recording. So that's good. As I realize that my battery is getting low. I try to charge all the time, but last night after I tried to do the video, I didn't. I thought, oh, it'll be fine for tomorrow. And then tonight it looks like, oh my gosh, it's running out, it's running out. And I don't happen to have a spare. It has to be charged. Like I said, you can do a lot more dots of what I'm doing on this right now, but I'm just trying to get it to where it's as close to being finished as it can be. Alright, so here's a quick look. Sorry that I can't really get it into the picture very well, but I'm just going to twirl it around here and show you. Again, I think it would be beautiful with lights on the inside of it. Just think about relaxing at night and having this or having a similar you know bottle design whatnot that you can enjoy your evening maybe do this with a regular wine bottle drink the wine and paint away alright so that's it for right now if you have any comments please put them down below any ideas of other things you'd like to see me do love to hear from you and until the next video Give me a big thumbs up and I will talk to you then. Have a good one.